Hello dear students, good morning. This is Mr. Vaibhav Shinde, working as an R&D engineer in ABB India Limited, Nashik. To give a little introduction about me, I have completed my Masters of Technology in CAD CAM CE discipline from RIT, uh, Raja Rambapu Institute of Technology, Islampur, Sangli. I did my BE uh, in Mechanical Engineering from Sandeep Foundation, Nashik. And then for last two years, I was working with CG Power and Distilled Solutions Limited, Nashik. But recently, I've switched over to a new organization called ZBB India Limited as an R&D engineer. So before we begin with this presentation, I would like to thank Professor Chetan Zada for putting up this uh, session on metal burnishing process. Uh, well, I'm not so much involved into this process or its applications for recent years, but it's just an overview to make you people understand what this process is all about and where it is being used in industries, how it is useful, what are its drawbacks and all those things. So we will see a detailed agenda for the today's session uh, in upcoming slides. So before we proceed, uh, proceed with this uh, today's session, let me just ask you people some question let us go through the next slide yes so as you can see here there are three terms noted down over there on the top of the slide science engineering and technology so the question to you here is what do you understand by these three terms and what is the difference between these three terms so you can put up your answers you can put up your views on the differences in these three terms into the chat box and you know just uh, let's let's make this slide interactive a little bit so that we can have your views on your uh, your views on these three terms and how do you perceive the differences between them yeah so please go ahead those who can answer about this okay i can see some of the answers coming up some say okay okay all right very good thank you for this good response so I'll, I'll, I'll just put up all of your answers in simple small phrases small words so most of you people are saying that science is something which is nature's law science is the basics of everything Science is physics, chemistry, <laughs> mathematics, biology. Okay, good. So, that, good, good, good. That's very good. Engineering is something that people are saying that engineering is about building up machines. Okay, building up constructions, infrastructures. Okay. Engineering is bringing up energy. Okay and technology okay that's what i wanted to know so yes most of you have said that technology is about designing something better or you know going into the research field so that's that's a very uh, you know vague definition of technology what you people have said but uh, here i would like to clarify this technology term uh, into a little bit details of it so okay that's it very good thank you for the response let us hear it from my side now for the differences between science, engineering and technology. So it is not uh, that I have, you know, had these thoughts into my mind. It is basically the differences that I have understood or that I could hear from one of my previous uh, previous managers. So I'll just try to dictate his views on what are the differences between these three terms. So let us begin with science first. So what is science? As you can see here in those two images, science is something which is basics of everything. Yes, as some of you rightly said, it is nature's law. It is science is everything which is there into existence in nature for a long, long time, which is unchallengeable, which is unchangeable. And, you know, something which is there. Just it is there. So just to give an example, 
ओके भैया सेफ को अगर नीचे गिरना है पेड़ से तो वो नीचे गिरेगा ही क्योंकि देर एग्जिस्ट अ ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स विच इज पुलिंग इट डाउनवर्ड्स सो दैट्स हाउ द न्यूटन यू नो डिस्कवर लॉ ऑफ ग्रेविटी Atoms has neutrons, protons, electrons into it. Nucleus and all those things, orbits, electrons are moving around the nucleus around in the orbits. So which is bound to be there, which we cannot challenge. अभी किसी को जाके पूछ नहीं सकते भैया दिखाओ एटम में न्यूट्रॉन कहाँ पे घूम रहा है, कितने ऑर्बिट पे घूम रहा है, किस डायरेक्शन में घूम रहा है. We cannot just ask it, isn't it? But it is there into existence, and we believe that it is there, and we apply those things, isn't it? एसिड और अल्कलाइन मिक्स करने के बाद में वी आर सपोज टू गेट ए न्यूट्रल सोल्यूशन वाटर का पी एच सेवन होता है योग या फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री के बारे में टू टॉक अबाउट बायोलॉजी आई वुड गिव एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस प्रोसेस ऑफ ट्रीज सो ट्रीज मेक यूज ऑफ सनलाइट एंड यू नो दे डू दर एनर्जी सिंथेसिस बाई गिविंग सम बाय प्रोडक्ट्स विच आर यूजफुल Nature Earth, and they they produce oxygen as a byproduct, so which we inhale for ourselves. And so likewise, they have also xylems and phylums into them for their you know water absorption system, capillary system. So that's that's something which is there into nature for longer time, and we which we cannot change, which we cannot challenge. But yes, it is there. It is believed that it is there. Now then, what is engineering? Now, since we have some basic principles with us, how do we make use of them to have a better lifestyle? Isn't it? So I've put forth some images. Uh, since you people belong to the mechanical engineering background, but uh, yes, you would also agree that it is not just about mechanical that engineering talks about. Yes, even though mechanical is one of the um, you know oldest branch of engineering, but then again, there are other aspects of engineering also. Isn't it? So we made use of those uh, basics of chemical elements, and we tried to form some medicines which are useful for people. We developed computers, we developed mobile phones, pagers, landlines, and whatnot. So that's what we did. We made use of the things that are present there in nature. and we developed something that is useful for the people of this earth people on this earth so isn't it so we have pehle chakkiyan ghumti thi lakdi ki isn't it to lakdi ke chakkiyon pe kuch ekdam oldest design tha to usko humne thoda sa improvise karke kuch kiya तो उसको इंजीनियरिंग में लाया तो उस चक्की का यूज हमने कुछ मशीन्स में किया यू नो रोटरी मोशंस पिक्चर में आई लॉज ऑफ एनर्जी है बेसिक्स ऑफ फोर्सेस एनर्जी इज इक्वल ब्रेम ऑल दोस थिंग्स आता है विच वी आर ब्रिंगिंग इट टू एप्लीकेशन एज अ पार्ट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग इज इन इट सो देन वट इज टेक्नोलॉजी दिस इज वेर मेनी पीपल गेट कन्फ्यूज अबाउट in in like more or less in just two aspects of it like some people take technology as a subsidiary of engineering or or they don't see any difference in engineering and technology on the other side many people believe that technology is all about design bringing up something new into market a sort of research and tech developmental activity but that's not the only aspect of technology let me clarify this thing to you here see bringing up something into market or developing something new for this you don't need technology for this you need to have some basics you need to have that approach to bring it into market which is basically an engineering approach it's not a technology approach but then what is technology technology is something that you develop it in such a way you modify your existing engineered product in such a way that it can be used by masses it can be used by people it can be used by communities in all so to give you an example here bhaiya computers earlier zamane mein hua hua karte hua karte the isn't it 
उनका साइज क्या था रिमेम्बर द फर्स्ट कंप्यूटर डेवलप्ड बाय सम साइंटिस्ट आई डोंट रिमेम्बर द नेम नाउ सो रिमेम्बर द फर्स्ट फर्स्ट एवर कंप्यूटर इट वाज अ फोर रूम साइज नाउ ईच हाउस हैज एट लीस्ट वन लैपटॉप एट लीस्ट वन वर्क स्टेशन एट लीस्ट वन डेस्कटॉप इन द हाउस सो वट इज एपन कंप्यूटर तो पहले भी था इट वॉज ऑलरेडी दैर इट वॉज डिवेलप्ड इट वॉज इंजीनियर by applying some basic science principles but then why these laptops and workstations and desktops came because everybody cannot just go and sit in front of the biggest computer and work there so it was in need of time that each house each individual carries his own computer and that's where the technology came into picture again mobile phones remember that days we had those dial in options dial in phones like or std phones or isd phones pagers walkie talkies everything into their usage they were working fine and they were all engineered products but then today if you see a compact sized very slim tree mobile phones have been developed which you can carry in your pocket easily anywhere any time you can talk to somebody you can surf anything onto them you can do a lot of with it so that's what technology is so now in this process it's not the only designs that are new that are, that are involved it's basically the marketing guys the designers the research and development guys the supply chain guys the production uh, people the sales people services people all are involved into it because see if marketing guys do not work hard to survey the market trends to survey the needs of people they won't be coming up with some new requirements so if marketing guy doesn't give some requirements technology people or design people will not be working on anything new because they because they might, might not know what future is going to demand from them likewise if they don't design something new productions or supply chains would not work in order to have a better efficient mass productive system to their presence isn't it same way sales will not be having a good enthusiastic job because if same product is to be sold multiple times to multiple customers it will be some some sort of boredom to them isn't it but the technological improvements are bringing in enthusiasm being bringing in keen interests for each and every individual each and every stakeholder involved into the process right from conceptualization till the end of the product life cycle of the product now furthermore uh, this is something a conventional or traditional technology uh, explanation that i have given to you but nowadays looking at the today's era what we see technology as is you know there are different terms to it digitalization is there then uh, artificial intelligence is there ai then iot is there in the internet of things then industry 4.0 artificial neural networks digitalization globalization all these are technological advancements that are coming into picture nowadays which are bound to happen in future in almost every product chain every product group every work sector these are the things which are in demand nowadays these are the technologies which are going to come up with a quality products for usage to many people at a single time cloud computing even you can see it at some location and you can share the files you can work online on cloud with multiple platforms with multiple stakeholders involved into it giving simultaneous inputs and producing a continuous constant single output 
So that's that's something which is coming up as a technology in future. All right. So I have a lot to say about this slice, but I'll not uh, continue. I'll stop here about this because the main focus is on um, burnishing process. So without wasting much time, let's go to the next slide. We'll quickly go through the agenda. What we will be discussing about burnishing today is first we will go through the introductory part of it. Then we will see some mechanics behind it. Then we will see what is what are its effects on mechanical components, how it is being used in manufacturing industries, what is its classification, what are its benefits, what are the drawbacks, then where it is being used as a process, and some miscellaneous like we will go through some videos, we will see uh, some other parts of it. Okay. All right. So let's quickly jump over to the introdu introduction of metal burnishing. We will see some definitions and some basics of burnishing, what it is exactly. So before we begin with the introduction, let me clear that or let me uh, put forth it to you that why burnishing has come up as a manufacturing process. Why? I mean, since it is a super finishing process, we also have some other super finishing processes like honing, lapping, grinding. Then, then why burnishing came up as a process? Okay. All right. So these recent technological developments, what we have seen so far, uh, are you know like demanding a sort of good quality, superior quality products which can serve the customers for a longer lifespan. So that's the, that's the basic demand for uh, any product in future, which you can dictate about it. So the engineers have to come up with a good sort of products with better qualities. Like, but, but you know, uh, also without compromising the production cost, because then if you offer something at a higher quality under the name of good quality a customer may not be able to accept that product because he will have to pay more for this but then again you know customer demands something good with a reasonably fair quality cost so the engineers have to work a lot on this and they had to develop processes that will you know like serve the needs of the customers in the market isn't it so these expectations are served that was the main focus of engineers isn't it so the service behavior and life of the component depends mostly on the surface properties and this is the reason which is why significant attention was spread on post machining operations because the conventional machining processes like turning milling etc do produce surfaces with inherent irregularities so the products or work pieces produced by the traditional methods of turning and milling do have surface irregularities or imperfections present on it and that's where the need for surface finishing operation that will you know nullify these irregularities or clear off these irregularities and also improve some other parameters or other properties of surfaces like surface hardness, corrosion resistance, wear resistance, fatigue properties. You know, the focus was there on that. There was a need for this operations. So these properties can be increased by utilizing surface plastic deformation processes, which normally do not remove material, but improve the surface properties by deforming the surface plastically. Uh, yes, obviously under some compressive loads. So under this external load, the surface of the component is subjected to basically a cold load again. And one such space, surface plastic deformation process, SPD process, is burnishing process, which is widely accepted by industries nowadays. Okay. So that is what i was about to go for so burnishing that's that's where like burnishing has come up into uh, the manufacturing sector as a process so to put it in front of you in simple words as a definition burnishing is simply a process of surface finishing 
for the workpiece or for the part or for component by plastic deformation due to sliding contact with the another object okay so that's the basic uh, terminology that i would use for burnishing as a definition in simple words so burnishing is a surface modification process which basically produces a very smooth surface finish by the planetary rotation of a tool over a turned surface or a machined surface now this tool may consist of one or more balls or rollers depending on which type of burnishing you are you are doing this process as i said earlier also that basically does not involve the removal of material from the workpiece and as i stated earlier also that the conventional machining processes of turning milling etc do have surface irregularities present on their surfaces and what do these irregularities consist of is basically peaks and valleys of the surface uh, part so the peaks and valleys which constitute the surface irregularities are there now the force applied by the burnishing tool will force the material from the peaks to flow into the valleys this will reduce the height of peaks and depth of valleys that's a simple funda thereby this will reduce the surface roughness and hence we term it as a surface finishing process now since there is no heating of the workpiece involved there is no preheating involved this is basically a cold working process isn't it now uh, yes due to this burnishing technique uh, compressive stresses are developed on the surfaces then the question may come that uh, yes there are some other compressive stress development processes like short pinning or laser short pinning then why do we need burnishing so yes there are processes like short pinning or laser short pinning which do develop compressive stresses on the surfaces but these stresses were found to be relaxed when the part or component is subjected to heat so this thermal relaxation of the compressive stresses developed by short pinning techniques will shorten will reduce the component life and reduce its performance that's why burnishing came up as a process that could impart thermally stable compressive stress on the surface now since we call it as a thermally stable it is basically without heating of the work pieces or without preheating of the work piece material or raw material and that's why it is termed as cold working process okay i hope you understand this now uh the basic principle is like um, okay the contact stress or right, let me go into a, a little detail of it burnishing process is considered as a cold working process because the surface of the workpiece is you know like subjected to severe stress due to planetary rotation of the workpiece as i mentioned earlier also planetary motion between the tool and the workpiece and the pressure applied by the tool so when this stress exceeds the yield strength of the material it results into the plastic flow of the material from peaks of the surface irregularities into the valleys thereby reduces the surface roughness this also induces thermally stable and long lasting compressive residual stresses now this burnishing can be both intentional and unintentional when it occurs as unintentional it is basically treated as a failure mode but when it occurs as intentional it is basically a controlled process controlled manufacturing process rather so as i have mentioned earlier uh let me just put on my pointer yes if you can see here in this image uh, the bottom image there is a workpiece there is a ball which is hardened ball or roller for that matter you can say with some radius a hard now both of these like tool and workpiece both are rotating understand this both are rotating that is how the planetary motion is being taken out from here and there is a constant feed so the this process involves pressing of this hardened ball or rolls into the workpiece giving a constant feed motion to the same 
Now this will develop compressive residual stresses on the surface of the workpiece and hence this will improve the fatigue strength and wear resistance of the surface. That's the basic of metal burnishing process. Okay. Let us go to the next slide. Now, since we understand, we know the basics of what exactly the metal burnishing process is all about. Let us see the basics or uh, basic mechanics behind it. Okay. So let us illustrate this mechanics by, you know, considering uh, the action of a hardened ball against the softer flat surface workpiece or plate. Now just imagine a case if the ball is pushed directly into the plate. Now where is ball, where is plate? You will be get confused. Then what is this water all about? So let us, I, I have purposefully taken out this image for you people. Like imagine this droplet as a hardened ball. Hardened ball. Steel ball maybe. And imagine this water surface as a flat workpiece top surface. Okay. Now. Okay, so if the ball is pushed directly into the plate, stresses are developed on the contact area of both the parts, like both the objects, steel ball also and the softer workpiece surface also. Now, as this normal force increases, as this normal force increases, okay, both the ball and the plate surface the ball and the plate surface will deform will deform now this deformation caused by the hardened ball increases with the magnitude of the force pressing it isn't it the deformation caused on both the object surfaces will increase with the increase in magnitude of the force with which we are pressing this ball into the workpiece now if the force on this ball is small okay if the force on this ball is small and once we release this force both the deformed surfaces of both objects will regain their original shape as dictated over here this normal force is applied on the ball which will cause some sort of indentation onto the workpiece surface but if this force is too small and when it is removed the surface will regain its original shape okay now in this case the stresses in the plate are less than the yield stress yield strength of the plate material and that is why the deformation is elastic that is the reason why the material or the surfaces are regaining their original shape now since the since it was said earlier that the plate is of a softer material and the ball is of a hardened material the plate's surface will always deform more agree now imagine a case when a larger force is used on this hardened ball if a higher force is used on this hardened ball and it is in a normal direction then a indentation which will be caused onto the uh, workpiece surface isn't it and this indentation will be surrounded by a ring like formation of the flown material Now, due to pressing, the material will flow where it will flow, the outside of the indentation and this flow of material will cause a ring-like structure to appear. Got it? Which is basically a displaced material by the pressing action. Now, this will happen only when the plastic deformation is allowed to happen. 
meaning the force is high enough to exceed the yield strength of this workpiece material then and then only in that case only this indentation with the outer ring like structure will be seen now imagine another situation uh, let us take up a case that same workpiece same ball is taken for the experimentation but now in this case the ball will not just be pushed down but it will also be dragged maybe along the workpiece or across the workpiece it depends but the direction won't matter as such over here in the sense that whether it is across or along that won't matter in the case of dragging of the ball along the workpiece or across the workpiece the force will be resolved into two components one will be normal to the workpiece and another would be tangential to the workpiece surface isn't it now here if the tangential force is high enough or the tangential component of the force is high then ball will start sliding along the plate isn't it and at the same okay uh, before we take up the cases since the force will be resolved into, resolved into two components tangential and normal the tangential force will try to drag the ball along the workpiece and at the same time the normal force will try to cause some sort of indentation or a mark or deformation of the surface just as the case which we have seen in the static situation now there could be cases like if the normal force is low normal force is low okay if the normal force is low the ball will simply rub along the workpiece but it will not cause any sort of deformation since the normal pressing force is less in magnitude got it so are you getting it in the case where the tangential force is higher than the normal force the ball will drag along without giving you a indentation mark on it because the normal force the pressing force is less in magnitude so it will just glide along the workpiece to put it in simple words now in another case where the normal force is high but tangential force is low the reverse case now in this case this higher normal force will flow the material along the tangential direction and simultaneously it will cause or this flowing of material will cause a formation of trough isn't it are you getting my point just see the in this case now this is a plastic deformation occurring so as i'm gliding the ball along this direction perpendicular to this workpiece i mean towards our eyes this sort of cup or curved formation will be there which is basically flowing of material now imagine that this workpiece comes along in a length in the direction perpendicular to the screen so this indentation will be along the direction perpendicular to the screen so that is basically the burnishing process okay so that's all about the basics or basic mechanism of burnishing process so what has happened here is a material has been flown from the highest points to the lowest points like peaks to valleys now this burnishing can also occur in between two flat presses a flat 
surfaces which are into contact for a longer time uh, with irregularities or asperities present in them so what will happen over a period of time is you know when some compressive forces are uh, acting on the flat surfaces or maybe some impact forces are acting on the surfaces eventually at some point in time there will be a deformation of those asperities or um, irregularities present on the both the surfaces and it will cause a formation of a smear texture a smooth texture on the plate surfaces okay so i hope i'm i'm clear with the mechanics part of this metal burnishing process so let's move on to the further part of it what are the effects of metal burnishing process on mechanical components now mechanical uh, sorry metal burnishing is not always desirable because it can have several unpredictable effects on to the mechanical components which are there into operation isn't it so to say or uh, even a light so, so, sort of burnishing will significantly alter the alter the surface finish of the part and uh, initially this finish will be smoother but with the repetitive sliding action uh, some sort of grooves will develop onto the surface along the sliding direction the plastic deformation associated with burn machining will harden the surface and generate compressive residual stresses now yes uh, this will create a conflict in your mind that earlier i have said that burn machining creates a surface hardness or compressive residual stresses uh, development so it should not be a problem isn't it yes it should not be a problem but up to certain limit if uh, excessive burn machining happens this will lead to now uh, spalling now what is spalling spalling is basically you know uh, subsurface crack development and then this phenomenon of crack development or crack initiation below the top surface of the workpiece will eventually over a period of time cause the upper layer of the surface to flack off are you getting my point now again burnishing may not always be Uh, good in a sense that it might affect the performance of machine the plastic deformations uh, associated with the burnishing can create a greater heat and friction between the sliding parts and then this will reduce the efficiency of the machine itself and it will also limit the speed since there is a friction involved into it coming into picture during its operation so uh, again this burnishing plastic deformation may alter the form and geometry of the workpiece or of the component which will reduce the precision and accuracy of the machine it might not perform the function that it is intended to perform over its period of operation so again as we all know the combination of high friction and uh, degraded form like is always a bad combination isn't it uh, to put it in simple words imagine a surface with friction high friction causing heat generation and also the part is not having the geometry or form as it is supposed to have in that case both are worsening factors like friction is worsening factor and a bad form or undesired form is also a worsening factor so two worsening factors when come into picture they will surely make the component to fail into its operation so that's how basically burnishing is an intentional when it is you know occurring as an unintentional phenomenon now how do we avoid this uh, unintentional burnishing can we eliminate this surely we cannot eliminate this but yes we can avoid it to some extent now how do we avoid it now the places now we uh, most of us or almost all of us have seen some or the other sort of machinery around us uh, which has uh, a certain movements of the components involved into it uh, multiple types of movements of the components present into some 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 machine or some assembly so we have seen this we have observed this multiple places now 
while designing itself can it be thought of in this sense that can i avoid this sliding action can i avoid this rubbing action of between two components can i have some alternate option to the sliding action in the sense that maybe can i put some rolling action between them is it possible that the components will give me a same sort of performance not exactly the same but almost nearer to the expectation sort of performance to me by making use of roller action instead of sliding action this thought should be given while designing uh, if uh, it cannot be avoided at all the sliding sliding action cannot be avoided at all because the function of that particular assembly or sub sub assembly demands it then can we make use of some sort of lubrication between the two mating components moreover if it is already there if it already if it is already specified by designer that some sort of lubrication is to be used during its operation but still i'm getting some sort of failure into it then can i make use of some other alternate lubricant which will reduce the friction basically so that's how we can avoid this natural unintentional burnishing from occurring into the uh, operational life of the product got it let's move on to the intentional burnishing so intentional burnishing now since everything has two aspects one is good one is bad unlike burnishing also has some good aspects of it it is not always bad but only when it is it it occurs in a controlled manner so when burnishing occurs in a controlled manner it can give you a lot of benefits burnishing processes are used in manufacturing to improve the size shape and surface finish of the uh, or surface hardness of the work pieces it is basically a forming operation on a smaller scale to put it into simple words the benefits of burnishing often include you know like delaying the fatigue failure preventing corrosion elimination of mutual defects closing porosity defects creating surface compressive residual stresses these are all benefits that we get when burnishing is applied or burnishing is carried out in a controlled manner now this burnishing has several forms like roller burnishing or ball burnishing depending on what type of burnishing you are using again the work piece can be at a higher temperature or at a room temperature when it is at a higher temperature the purpose is basically to reduce the wear of the work piece tool sorry wear of the tool you know to have a longer life span of the tool why we need to have a longer life span of the tool that we will see into the advantages of, or disadvantages of burnishing now this burnishing also occurs in your conventional machining processes like turning milling in case of turning and milling when the tool is used for multiple times and when the tip of the tool becomes blunt and you are using it into the operation of turning or milling it is basically causing a burnishing operation or on the contrary if you are using the tool with a small cutting depths then also the operation is similar to burnishing operation if the workpiece material itself is gummy like epoxy like nylon then the operation that you carry out cutting operation turning or milling operation basically that you carry out is uh, can be resembled to the burnishing operation the only thing is that some parameters need to be controlled and then only you can resemble it to burnishing process otherwise it otherwise it will be a normal turning or milling operation in case of grinding as you know grinding wheel has randomly oriented uh, grains into it so these grains will be sharp at some point in time and blunt at some point in time so grinding uh, isn't it so grinding will also serve as uh, serve as a burnishing process 
there, there is going to be some amount of burnishing occurring there in the grinding process. So uh, this is okay. Now let us see. Yeah, uh, the last point that this metal burnishing when carried out in a controlled manner can be used as a deburring operation also. So that is also one of the benefits that we can take out of it. So it is especially useful for the uh, removal of burr in the you know through holes that are drilled into the workpiece through holes when i say through holes it has openings from both the sides top and bottom because uh, in deburring operation the ball burnishing the burnishing tool will be passed from one end and it will be taken out from the other end that's how the deburring will occur okay so that is about intentional burnishing any doubts up till now okay so now let's quickly on to the let's quickly move on to the classification of burnishing it's already 45 minutes i'm taking a lot of time but let us see what are the classifications of burnishing process so burnishing process has two types ball burnishing and roller burnishing with some uh, minor change into it, both so in ball burnishing the tool basically consists of one or more spherical balls now these balls are held in a shank of the tool holder by means of some hydraulic pressure or spring force and uh, also the corresponding reactive force from the workpiece that acts on the balls now this tool is fed along the workpiece when it is coming into the contact with the workpiece surface the burnishing process will occur now the amount of burnishing will depend on the burnishing force burnishing force will depend on the hydraulic pressure or the spring force that is given onto the ball so the image here shows a typical view of a ball burnishing process or a schematic of a ball burnishing process this is a typical ball burnishing tool and these are a little bit of advanced ball burnishing tools that are into practical use now this variation of the hydraulic pressure as you can see in the schematic there is some sort of hydraulic uh, fluid present into the tool holder this is the spherical ball which is also circulated or surrounded by the hydraulic fluid and there you have a tool holder or shank and the gray part is a workpiece and likewise the tool will be fed so whatever irregularities are there present on the surface of the workpiece will be flown out and a smooth finish can be obtained now in some cases oversized balls can be used to push them to maintain the whole diameters like in like just similar to the deepening operation that we have just talked now about also there is one more variant of ball burnishing called as vibratory ball burnishing wherein the ball burnishing is carried out with some sort of vibration motion assistance we will see uh, this into the last slide of this presentation what is vibratory ball burnishing how it is used with some with some practical example now talking about roller burnishing it is similar to ball burnishing the only difference is that instead of balls rollers are used now these rollers can be single roller or multiple roller mounted on a shank of the tool shank can be connected to the machine tool post like lathe or milling machine now again same way as like unlike ball burnishing when the tool is made in contact with the workpiece the burnishing will occur due to planetary motion so you know the basics of it now now these rollers can be um, you know tapered or uh, tapered or they can also be of a form like uh, during operation of burnishing they will hold uh, they will take up the shape of the workpiece itself again the hydraulic uh, system components or shaft fillets or you know like ceiling surfaces 
are the applications of this roller burnishing process. Uh, using roller burnishing process, a close control of size can be achieved. Not just roller burnishing, but also wall burnishing process. So that the that's that's part of the advantage of this process. Okay. So moving on to the benefits of it. On accuracy part, a fine control of the size is possible by using uh, this burnishing process isn't it a parts can be produced by burnishing with high control over the dimensions and hence very close to uh, tolerances can be achieved then moving on to the next surface finish a good surface finish or very smooth surface finish as high as 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 microns is possible to achieve with burnishing process then improved physical properties as we have already discussed burnishing produces hard surfaces causing them to be fatigue failure prevention uh, proof uh, wear resistance corrosion resistant uh, surfaces due to cold rolling operation or cold forming operation and uh, basically it is because of the compressive residual stresses that are induced into the surfaces of the workpiece uh, burnishing is economical in a sense that the tool burnishing tool can be mounted on your conventional machining equipments like a lathe machine tool post or milling machine tool post like that so you not you need not to remove the workpiece and then take it to some other special purpose machines then mount the tool burnishing uh, burnishing tool onto the tool post of that spm and then hold the job uh, hold the job into the chuck and then carry out the machining so uh, so in a way since the conventional machines can be used just by changing the tool on the tool post uh, there is no need to uh, you know adjust the workpiece so this will basically reduce your cycle time and uh, thereby giving you a saving in time and then the cost so that's how it is economical adjustable settings uh, burnishing tools can be developed so that they can be used for multiple purposes like a single tool can suffice the purpose of burnishing various complex surfaces you know as i mentioned varieties of tools can be made can be used for processing there is no cheap formation in this process it is less noisy process so that's about the benefits or advantages of metal burnishing process Moving on to drawbacks of this process, the high initial tool cost is involved into this process because burnishing tools in some cases can be customized once based on the complexity of your draw, uh, job. But nevertheless, uh, for the tool itself, a high initial cost is required because the tools are made of a special hardened materials like cemented carbides or tungsten carbide tools, see, diamond tools. Uh, hardened steel tools so uh, making up these tools with some sort of processes and good quality material will take up some initial cost uh, yeah so this is one of the drawback of it the second drawback that we were talking about is the miniature work pieces cannot be worked so small size work pieces which are into mass production cannot be worked but nevertheless due to advantages uh, due to advancements in the burnishing technique now uh, a similar technique is developed wherein you can also work on the miniature work pieces you can also improve the surface finish of the small sized components also the th another drawback that we were discussing is that thin walled components can be cannot be burnished because you know uh, it burnishing is basically a compression uh, action or compressive force development or compressive stresses development activity and uh, or a process and since the thin wall components may not have that strength that strength to you know take up those compressive loads the component failure uh, would be more uh, dominant in that case so the thin walled or thin surfaced components can be worked with metal burnishing 
as I mentioned earlier also that if the workpiece is having complex parts complex surfaces which demand for a good surface finish then the cost of tooling will further increase because special tools should need to be developed in some cases some surfaces might would be there which we cannot work to achieve that surface finish by a process of burnishing also so that's the drawback it is not suitable for ordinary finishing glass like uh, where we will not normally recommend this operation to be carried out on the surfaces wherein a normal regular finish by conventional machining processes is acceptable in it uh, that is but obvious no one would be paying something extra for unnecessary things and then a uh, numerical assessment is required to verify the smoothness of the finish meaning uh, uh, we'll take up two cases for the same workpiece if a workpiece is turned by uh, turning on a length then uh, to verify whether the component qualifies the requirements we will simply measure its dimensions as specified on the drawing and verify that whether the actual measurements are within the tolerance that is specified on the drawing or not we will keep it aside but on the contrary since burnishing as a process has its base to improve the surface finish we will have to look onto the surface finish aspect of it which we normally ignore in case of uh, traditional machined comp uh, components unless and unless and until it is specified in the, on the drawing as a RA value so but if we are undergoing burnishing operation for some particular surface or a particular workpiece then it is uh, uh, binding on us to verify the RA value by some sort of experimental measurements or numerical assessment for the measurements so that's the additional thing which you need to perform here in this case of burnishing apart from the conventional machining operations okay so that's about the benefits and drawbacks of this let's take up a quick look at applications of it so industrial applications of metal burnishing process includes the uh, production of aerofoil components health industry equipment materials or components of the health industry equipments capillary tubes needles needles of injectors like in automobile industries the nozzle injectors have needles so these needles are basically used by uh, or the surface finish of these needles is improved by lapping process but since lapping is cost uh, consuming process and uh, time consuming process we can think of this ball, ball burnishing operation there in that case food industry uh, since we require corrosion resistant resistant components to have a quality of food to be processed into these industries so burnishing can be one of the options in some of the components of these equipments turbine blades since we need to have again a corrosion resistant uh, turbine blade materials or turbine blades uh, for their longer life we can think of using uh, burnishing techniques cutting tools again to have a greater fatigue life or greater uh, component life of the tools for a longer life usage of the tools we can think of burnishing operation and as i said earlier also in roller burnishing some hydraulic system equipments or components can be produced by burnishing techniques to have a longer life because uh, those components are always in contact with some lubricants and lubricants might have some moisture which will cause which can cause uh, corrosion and all those things so to avoid those things we can uh, make use of metal burnishing now metal burnishing has all of these applications into industries but these are the limited uh, limited applications it can be extended as and when the case may be uh, based on you know that application you can modify the tool that will be required to carry out the process the process parameters need to be set accordingly like the fit the speed the force of burnishing all those things okay let's move to the next slide so this is the last slide i guess the applications of metal burnishing now to my experience in my previous organizations we used to carry out this metal burnishing operation on 
this sort of equipment so visually you can see what sort of benefits or what sort of improvements it is uh, carrying out there in the surfaces of the work pieces so this is a normal traditional machined component and this is ball burnished component again this is normal machined component after casting this is ball burnished component you can see the surface finish visually we have even the comparative chart mentioned over here the array value earlier before burnishing it was 1.075 microns after burnishing it came out to be 0.45 or 0.44 microns and again hardness in earlier case was 110 to 115 but after burnishing it improved to be 138 and 141 now this hardness we are talking about is always a surface hardness and never a hardness of the material as a whole or at the core of the material it is always at the surface since cold uh, burnishing is basically a surface treatment or surface finish operation you can also go and visit this link to see the newly developed vibratory ball burnishing this is the picture that dictates you the vibratory ball burnishing process wherein a butt bucket or tub of uh, hardened steel balls is given some vibration assistance to have the impact of those steel balls onto this workpiece and some sort of coolant is used the white colored coolant that you can see so you can quickly go to youtube and you can see ample of vibratory ball burnishing process videos there onto it to understand how vibratory ball burnishing process is there so thank you everyone my side about this that's it from my side about this ball burnishing technique so thank you everyone for your kind attention and patient listening to the process and this session yes thank you thank you so much